we thank you, Lord God. Father, for your presence in this place, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, Father, for your power and dominion, Lord God. Father, we call upon the mighty one of Israel tonight, Lord God. God, if you would rent the heavens open, God. God, if you would pour out tongues of fire, Lord God. Father, we declare, Lord God, this, this tent, Lord God, your holy tabernacle, your dwelling place.
the church say amen? amen. Let the church say amen. amen. God is good all the time. All the time. Let's worship the Lord for our worship team leading us into worship. Worship prepares your heart. Worship prepares your heart. Don't ever skip worship. Don't ever skip worship. Your heart needs to be prepared for the word. For the spirit of the Lord is here. The Lord wants to touch your life in a mighty way. We welcome everyone to our Second night of revival. God is taking us deeper and deeper. I want to give a shout out to our, our car section for all those who drove out in their car. Make some noise for all those who drove out in the car. People are pressing into the kingdom of God. What a blessing. What a blessing. I want to, I want to do something uh, before uh, we prepare our hearts for to give an offering unto the Lord. I want to do something different and something special. I want to call the uh, Witten family. Jason and Kristen, come, yeah. up here, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Just come up here for a moment. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for the Witten family. The Witten family, um, the Lord touched their hearts last night. Uh, through the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. And the Lord is doing something deep in their heart. And I want to come just tonight, I believe the Lord put it in my heart, to kind of symbolically start this new season yeah. in your marriage, in your life, and in your family. And that we as the church of God embrace you. We embrace you. The devil thought he had you. The devil thought he had your marriage. The devil thought he had your marriage, but God has touched your heart. God has touched your heart. God has touched your heart. God has touched your heart, and by the grace of God, y'all has responded. Y'all responded by the grace of the Lord. Now I'm telling you, it takes a man of God to do that. It takes a man and a woman of God to do that. Listen, it takes a man and a woman of God to do that. And, 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 and in the midst of all this, I want to honor you two for your courage. For your courage. Y'all are saved. Y'all are filled with the Holy Ghost. You couldn't be saved to humble yourself. You couldn't be saved to share what you share. You couldn't be saved to do that. Nobody who was not saved would be transparent like that. So I want to, I want to kind of just, I want to put a cap on this new season for you. Season of restoration, season of growth, season of flourishing. And we want to give you all our blessing. We want to give you all our blessing. The Lord is doing something. The Lord is doing something. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it. So my wife and I, on behalf of the entire church, we speak, we speak for the entire church. Someone say amen. We embrace you. We love you. We pray God's best for you. When you wake up tomorrow morning, waking up for a new season. New season. I don't know what happened last week. I'm in a new season. I don't know what happened yesterday. I'm in a new season. God gave me a new day. I don't know what happened last week. I, I got a new day. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. God has favored you. That's what you got to say. No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We're going to pray for you. Just to seal, seal this new season. Lift up your hands to our, our brother and sister and their whole family. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace of restoration. We thank you for your grace of restoration, Lord. Lord, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we command in the name of Jesus a spirit of condemnation to flee. A spirit of guilt to flee. Lord, you've given a new season. You're breathing a new season, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the Witten family. Your hand has been upon them long before we ever knew them. Your hand has been upon them before they were even poor. 
Father, we side up with you and side up with you and side up with them. Lord, we release this new season into their life. New season of marriage, forgiveness, mending, love, bonding, Holy Ghost. Father, we loose it into their life, Father God, in Jesus' name. That tonight, this moment, they start. There's a shift in their marriage. A shift in their spirituality. A shift in their walk with you, Lord God. Right now, Lord. Father, we pronounce a blessing over them, Father. We love them, but you love them more. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Love you, love you. Give the Lord a hand praise. I, I also want to do this. I want to do this. There's a, one of our elders. One of our elders is in the Toyota. Uh, Brother James Gatson. He's in the Toyota. I don't know if you can, you can hear me right now. Um, but he's in the Toyota right there. James Gatson is approximately 80 years old. And, and, and he pressed into to, to the revival tonight. Amen. And so I want us to lift up our hands towards that Toyota. I want us to lift up our hands to Brother James Gatson. He's one of our elders and one of our fathers in the faith. Amen. In the church. And he's pressing in. His lights are on right there. His lights are on. Everybody lift up your hands towards him. And we're going to lift up his body. We're going to lift up his mind. We're going to lift up his spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for our brother James Gatson. Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, you said you are a rewarder to those who diligently uh, seek your face, Father God. Lord, our brother came out tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name. He drove all the way, Father God, over here, Father God, because he loves you. Because he loves you. He loves you. Jesus. Yes. He's pressing in. Even, a, even after 80 years old, he's pressing in. Oh, Lord God. Lord God, we take a second, we take a second to repent from our laziness, Lord God. Lord, we're sorry when we didn't press in, Father God. Lord, he's pressing in after 80 years old, Lord God. Lord, we pray an extra blessing over him. Physically, Lord. Bless him physically, Lord. Strengthen him physically, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen his body, Lord God. His lungs, Lord God. Strengthen his lungs, Lord God. Strengthen his mind, Father God, Lord. Strengthen his spirit, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Strengthen his spirit, Lord God. And Lord, bless his family. Bless his grandchildren. Bless his wife. Bless, bless everything about him, Father God, in Jesus' name. We pray. We believe. We release a blessing over James Gatson right now in the name of Jesus. And everyone who believes that, shout amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to prepare right now. Um, we're going to prepare for two things. We're going to prepare to give an offering unto the Lord. This is our birthday offering going to our church. Um, and if you're part of Chapel of Change, I want to encourage you to give tonight uh, as part of our birthday offering. Uh, we handed out a brochure that says, Get Connected and Activated. Nobody here should be serving the Lord by themselves. There are multiple ways that you can stay connected to Chapel of Change. Uh, I want to let you know that we have five outdoor services on the weekend, Saturday night in the city of Whittier at 5 p.m. Anybody from our Whittier campus out there? We have multiple services in the city of Carson. Anybody from our Carson campus? That's 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Sundays. And then our Long Beach and Paramount campus together at 9.30 and 11.30 right here under the tent. I want to encourage y'all, we need to worship the Lord. There's also other ways that we could stay connected. There's a Wednesday night prayer conference call that my wife and I lead on the phone. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., you don't even need to get out your bed. You just turn around and dial up the number. It's like 911. Call and get prayed for, get prayed over. Not only that, pray with us for the world. Pray with us for the world. That's every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We also have Zoom prayer in the morning. Pastor Martin and Mary, lift up your hands, Pastor Martin and Mary. Zoom prayer every weekday at 8 a.m. Y'all need to get connected. There's more way than one to get connected and stay alive during this pandemic. Amen? 
Also, we have our radio ministry on Sundays at 3.30 on KKLA 99.5 FM. There's three ways that you can give. Three ways that you can give. Tonight you can give through an envelope. Um, you can give your birthday offering. Remember, this birthday offering is going to repaving our parking lot. We are going to repave our parking lot in the month of November. All this offering tonight is going to repave our parking lot. It is an eternal investment for the kingdom of God because thousands of people walk on this parking lot. Amen? Someone shout amen. amen. You can give through an envelope tonight. You can give through a debit card in the corner. If you want to get to your debit card, there is a debit machine that our sisters is over there. Susan is leading. You can give to, to, to the, through the debit card. You can text to give. We got we got techno during the uh, pandemic. Y'all forgot about techno. Huh? Um, you can text chapel to 1-888-364-4483. You text chapel on your phone. You can give through your phone. 1-888-364-4483. Or you can give in person or on our website, www.chapelachange.org. I'm going to call up Sister... Um, Kim to come up and get ready. She's going to bless us with a um, authentic song that she has she has produced. Sister Kim is is uh, Kim Hit Worship. You can check out her worship online. She's written this song to bless the church. It's going to inspire you to draw closer to the Lord. She's also our Whittier Campus worship leader. Amen. By the way, if you weren't here last night, I told you uh, next year, I believe in February, we're tag teaming with Kim Hit Worship, and we're going to be hosting a worship night in the city of Whittier where we're having uh, Brian Trejo, who's going to come down and do some kingdom music to the glory of God, so keep your ear open for that. If you're part of Chapel of Change, I'm going to challenge you to give a sacrifice tonight to the church. We're going to pray over the offering, and then I'll release the ushers, and they'll walk through the aisles, and then Sister Kim will bless us. Father God, we thank you for the ability to give. We worship you through this giving, Lord God. Receive this offering into your kingdom, and I pray a blessing to every giving heart tonight. A blessing, Father God. We know, Father God, that we don't give to get back. We know that, Lord God. But we also know it's a principle in the kingdom of God. As much as we give is as much as we receive. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing, a double blessing back, Father God, to the generous heart, Father God. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We release the ushers to collect the offering. You know, as I began to pray for revival this week, and I, I begged God, I said, God, I want revival. Not just for chapel of change, but I want it in my heart. I want a revival to spring forth inside of my soul. And he said, Kimberly, you're going to have to lay down your pride. He said, Kimberly, you're going to have to lay down your own understanding. He said, Kimberly, you're going to have to lay down your lack of submission and your bitterness and your offense and your defense. And you're going to have to lay it all down. And I've been singing this song for so long and I didn't realize that it was a prophecy to my own soul. Because yeah. last night I had a revival inside of me and I realized that I was just a sad, lonely, fearful little girl who had been fighting her whole entire life. And last night God said, Kimberly, you don't got to fight no more. Stop being so offensive. Stop being so defensive, Kimberly. I will fight for you. You need only be still. And I don't know what you came here with. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're weary. Maybe you're offensive. Maybe you have pride. Maybe you're just lonely. God wants you to lay it down. He's asking you to lay it down because before he can fill you, you have to lay down. You have to be in his presence and at his altar. And I came here to tell you that I am just a little girl inside my soul that wants to lay before her king tonight. And I enjoy and implore you to join me. I encourage you to join me because he wants you to have revival. He wants you to have it. But you got to lay down. you got to lay down some things. Amen. When I'm tired, 
We want to honor our pastors, amen. How many of you believe that these are, how many of you know these are great pastors? They're great leaders.
want to say thank you for your obedience. So many more souls are coming into the kingdom. We say we thank you. Come on. We got to go. prayers. Hallelujah. There's power in prayer. Amen. There's power in prayer. I sense the anointing here today. Where the anointing is, if we just we tap into it by faith, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's breakthrough in the anointing. I want to encourage everybody to lean in to this next half of our time together. My wife and I are going to minister to your heart, to your body, to your soul, your soul, soul. Some of y'all are saved in your spirit, but there's areas of your soul that are still bound. You say, you say. There's areas of your soul that are still bound. The Holy Spirit wants to set somebody free tonight. He wants to deliver someone tonight. So I want, to, I want to exhort you to lean in to the last half, the second half of our time together. I'm going to give you a word. Then my wife is going to come up and lead us. Not just in a time of pretty little prayer. But in a time of <coughs> deliverance prayer. We may not know what you're going through, but the Spirit of the Lord does. And the Spirit of the Lord is like a holy x-ray. Doing an x-ray right now. You may not realize it, but the Holy Spirit right now is doing an x-ray. Before you go into that operation table, you got to have an x-ray. You can't just go up into the operating table. you got to have an x-ray. Through the worship, through the prayer, through the word. There's a Holy Ghost x-ray taking place right now. Then we're going to carry you into the operating table. Anybody ready tonight? Anybody ready tonight? I want to encourage you just for a moment. Stand back up to your feet for a moment. Let's stand to our feet. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If you have your phone, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 10. If you have your phone, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 10. It has been said that wherever the apostle Paul preached, either a revival happened or a riot happened. Either a revival or a, or a riot. Sometimes both. Sometimes both. Sometimes a revival happened and then the revival kicked off a riot. When the Apostle Paul went into the city of Thessalonica, he preached the gospel and, and, and many, many people got saved. But... How many of you know when you take territory from the enemy, the enemy gets mad and gets rattled? The enemy begin to rattle, get rattled, and the unbelievers begin to persecute the church. And eventually in Thessalonica, they kicked out Apostle Paul. And they persecuted the church. They hurt the church, and some of them, some of the church even got killed. First Thessalonians is the letter. That Apostle Paul writes back to the church to wake them up. To wake them up. Because
because many of them allowed the attack of the enemy to put them to sleep. Paul scribbles this letter by the anointing of the Holy Ghost to, to wake them up because many of them had been put to sleep. When I talk about sleep tonight, I'm talking about, I'm talking about spiritually inactive. I'm talking about being inactive toward God, inactive toward worship. I'm talking about being inactive toward studying your Bible, inactive toward service. I'm talking about being put on a shelf. I'm talking about being indifferent. I'm talking about half-heartedness. They allowed the enemy to put them to sleep. K-O, ding, ding. They stopped, they stopped responding to the bell. If you're a born again believer, the Holy Spirit has put a bell in your heart. If you're a born again believer, the Holy Spirit has put a bell in your heart. And every time it's time for you to study your Bible, every time it's time for you to go to church, every time it's time for you to pray and worship, some of them stop responding to the it's a dangerous place when you stop responding to them this is what he says 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 through 11 but concerning the end times and the seasons brethren you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord someone say day of the Lord the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day, notice that, this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore... Therefore, someone say therefore. therefore. That means because of the day of the Lord. Therefore, because of the day of the Lord, let us not sleep. Some of them have been put to sleep. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us, let us, us, us. Someone say that's me. Someone say that's us. But let us who are of the day, the day, the day, the day. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation. That's a picture of the militant church right there. Whenever the scripture tells you to put on the armor of God, whenever the scripture teaches you about spiritual warfare, that's the militant church. That's not the sleeping church. That's the militant church. And if there was ever a time for the militant church to rise up in power and authority, now is the day. He said, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us. Challenge us. Convict us tonight. Help us to lean into it, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lean in, lean in, lean in for a couple moments. Lean in for a couple moments. In order to understand... The end times. You have to understand the beginning of time. It's called the big picture. God has called us to be big picture Christians. Not to be stuck in a narrow perspective. But to have the big, big picture. The world today is not how God originally created it. What's going on today is not how God originally created it. I need to, I need to take you back before I, before I set your mind on ahead. 
in this world today, there are two kingdoms. Someone say two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of, of light and the kingdom of darkness. And these two kingdoms are at war with one another. They are at war with one another. In Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, in the beginning, remember, in order to understand the end times, you've got to understand the beginning of time. In Genesis chapter 1, God launched His kingdom in this world. And we, you and I, were created to be kings and priests in this world. That's the reason why God created the garden. Anybody remember the Garden of Eden? The garden was not for carrots. It was for kings. Gardens back in the days were for kings. And God originally created you and I as kings and priests. And our mission, original job description, was to spread the glory of God around the world. As God was to rule in heaven, you and I were to rule on earth on his behalf. When the scripture says to multiply and be fruitful, he wasn't just talking about having babies. We learned last night that you got to look beyond the surface of a thing and to the, to the heart of the matter. And I've been teaching y'all that if all you see is what you see, then you're not seeing all there needs to be seen. When God instructed us to be fruitful and to multiply, that was not just about having babies. That was about spreading His glory around the world because you and I were created to be carriers of God's glory. We were carriers of God's glory. So when we spread, the glory spread. When we showed up, the glory showed up. When we walked, the glory walked. It was powerful. It was powerful. It was powerful. Then, Genesis chapter 3, we got attacked. We got attacked, and because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, we lost the kingdom. We lost the kingdom. We lost the kingdom. And at the moment that Adam and Eve disobeyed, that's when sin entered the world. And as a result of sin, uh, injustice entered the world, corruption entered the world, uh, uh, sickness entered the world, disease entered the world, brokenness entered the world, methamphetamines entered the world. You want to trace back methamphetamines, you go back to the disobedience of Adam and Eve. We lost the kingdom. The world today is not how God originally created it, but how mankind fumbled it. It's how mankind fumbled it. It's the reason why there's so much injustice today. That's the reason why there's so much corruption today, hatred today, anger today. God didn't, God didn't initiate that. The world today is not how God originally created it, but how mankind fumbled it. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, at that moment, we entered into what, what, what many scholars refer to as the day of Satan. The moment that Adam and Eve disobeyed, it, it, we entered into a season, a, a, a time that many scholars describe as the day of Satan. In fact, it right now, right now, in a sense, in a sense, we live in the day of Satan. And that's why there's corruption, injustice, brokenness, sin. That's why this world is messed up. Right. The moment Adam and Eve rebelled and sinned, the enemy came in and hauled us off as POWs, prisoners of war. And he began to feed us lie and destruction. And he began to, to hurt us. But here's the real deal. He really didn't want to hurt us. He wanted to hurt God. But he couldn't get to God. So he goes to the next best thing, which is man. Some of y'all didn't catch that. It's really not about you. If you thought it was about you, something is wrong. God didn't hurt you just to hurt you. He's hurting you to get back at God. I mean, 
The devil is not hurting you just to hurt you. He's hurting you to get back at God. Because you're the apple of his eye. He can't touch God. Jesus didn't come just to save us. It's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. It's bigger. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than this church. It's bigger than my problems. It's bigger. If I thought it was just for me, then I'm a little bit self-centered. It's bigger than me. Jesus came. When Jesus came initially, when he was born, Jesus' birth sparked a revolution to overthrow the kingdom of Satan. That's one of the main reasons why he was born. It is bigger than just you and I. First John talks about the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. It's bigger than just you and I. The birth of Jesus sparked a revolution to overthrow the kingdom of Satan. I'm trying to get you to look beyond what's right in front of you. The church of Thessalonica was being rocked to sleep by the enemy and they didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. They became inactive. They became uh, half-hearted. They became indifferent. They stopped responding. They stopped responding to them. They stopped, stopped responding to the veil. Apostle Paul wakes them up by slapping them with the day of the Lord. That's what he does in the scripture. In verse 2, he says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? Listen, the day of the Lord is one of the major biblical truths in the Bible that the prophets have revealed over and over and over again. Yes. The day of the Lord. And as I was praying and thinking about what God would want me to say to chop the change, um, um, uh, what God would want me to say, I really believe that God would want me to remind you, as Apostle Paul reminded the Thessalonican church, of the day of the Lord. I said, Lord, but I, I want to comfort them. I want to encourage them. No! No, now is not the time. They should have been comforted eight months ago. They should have been built up eight months ago, nine months ago. You need to remind them of the day of the Lord. Acts chapter 2, verse 20, listen. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid before. I come to church tonight to remind Chapel of Change and all those that are listening either online or wherever you're at that we are all headed toward the day of the Lord. We are all headed towards the day of the Lord. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. And listen, it's good news for some, but it's bad news for others. It's good news for some, but it's bad news for others. The day of the Lord is when God judges the wicked. Since we lost the kingdom, wicked people by, law, by large have prevailed. Since we lost the kingdom, injustice has infected this world. Since we lost the kingdom, um, injustice has 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 made us broken and hurt us. Jesus first came as a savior. The next time he comes will be as a mighty judge. And he is going to judge the wicked on the day of the Lord. 
Revelation 19 says, But I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. That's the militant savior right there. That's who's coming back. Not the little baby with the lamb and in the manger. No, but the warrior judge on the horse. He's coming back. This is why the scripture teaches us. This is why the scripture teaches us. Take, do not take revenge. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. That's why the scripture says don't take revenge. Don't take revenge. I'm going to judge the wicked. I'm going to straighten them out. Let me have them. Let, let me have them. Let me have them. I think of my brothers and sisters in our church who have, who have suffered unjust, unjustly. I think of our sister. I, I don't know where our sister Marianne. Where's Marianne? Is Marianne here? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Where's Marianne? She's in the car. Marianne, if you can hear me, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of how, how, how your daughter was murdered, right? And I'm thinking about how that guy has not been caught. I'm thinking about how I don't know where he is, but I want to encourage you tonight that one day he's going to meet the guy on the white horse and he's going to be judged. He's going to be judged. He's going to come face to face with the mighty judge on the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when God exterminates sin forever. Amen. There's going to be a time, my brothers and sisters, where we're not going to wrestle with sin anymore. Someone needs to shout amen. amen. <laughs> we ain't going to wrestle with this flesh anymore. Hello, somebody. We ain't going to wrestle with this flesh. We ain't going to have to count no calories no more. Uh, we're not going to have to wrestle with our fragile mind. We're not going to have to wrestle with depression and insecurity and addiction. The day of the Lord is when God exterminates sin forever. And we're not going to have to wrestle and war no more. There was an old hymn, old school hymn that says, I'm going to lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside. Study war no more. Study war no more. Tonight we fight, my brothers and sisters, but there's going to come a time where we're going to lay down our, our armor at the foot of the cross, at the foot of our Savior, and we're not going to have to battle no more. Amen. Revelation talks about it, says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. That is coming, my brothers and sisters, on the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when God brings the fullness of his kingdom. The day of the Lord is when God brings the fullness of his kingdom. Jesus' birth sparked the revolution that brought the kingdom down, uh, uh, relaunched the kingdom on the earth. And our mission, our mission, Jesus gave us a mission uh, in his prayer. And our mission is to bring the kingdom down, bring the kingdom down. But there's going to come a time where the kingdom of God comes in its fullness. Right now we live in the tension of already but not yet. We're, we're to bring the kingdom down, but the kingdom is not going to come down until it, in its fullness until the day of the Lord. And God makes all things new. God will make all things new. We are all headed towards the day of the Lord. We're all headed towards the day of the Lord. And Paul reminds the church. He reminds us. 2020, we're headed. We're headed towards the day of the Lord. Because we're moving towards the day of the Lord, Paul warns the church to not fall asleep. Some of y'all didn't catch that. Yeah. Apostle Paul warns the church to live awake. Because, because we're headed towards the day of the Lord. He warns the church not to allow the world to rock you to sleep. Not to let the world to walk, rock you to sleep. Paul warns the church to live awake, to don't be sleepwalking. It's dangerous to be sleepwalking. Anybody ever slept walk before? It's dangerous. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to sleepwalk. And, and it was dangerous. Like I would go to sleep in my bed. And I would wake up in my mom's truck out in the street. And I'd be like, what happened? I didn't know what was going on. 
It's dangerous to be sleepwalking. And so many Christians, they sleepwalk and they, they end up, they, they start off in church, but then they go to sleep and they end up. <laughs> Paul warns the church, he says, therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Sleep inactive towards worship, inactive towards service, inactive towards God. Uh, sleep is, is, is being non-responsive, lukewarmness, half-heartedness. Sleep is not responding. Back in the days, they used to put bells on churches. When we bought this church about five years ago, um, I, there's a bell up there. And I said, man, one of the first things we're going to do when we buy this church, I'm sure that bell has not been rang for so long. But back in the days, they put bells on churches. You know why? To remind them it was church time. To remind them it was church time. And so back in the days, they'll be eating lunch or wherever they'll be eating breakfast or brunch or whatever it is. And then... And the parent will be like, hey, 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 Nathaniel, it's time to get ready. It's time to get ready. Sarah, it's time to get ready. What do you mean it's time to get ready? The bell is ringing. The bell is ringing. When we bought this church, I said, man, there's a bell, man. There's a bell. I, I can't wait to, but as soon as we buy this thing, I'm going to go up there and I'm going <laughs> to. bought this church, I looked up there, it was fake bells. <laughs> but there's a bell in your heart. There's a bell in your heart. If you say, if you feel with the Holy Ghost, there's a bell. If you say there's a bell in your heart. And it rings. If you if you part of our Whittier campus, it rings about about 3 p.m. on a Saturday. And if you're part of our Carson campus, it rings about maybe 7 a.m. In, uh, in the morning to get ready for 9 a.m. If you're part of our Paramount and Long Beach campus, it probably rings about 9, 30, 9 o'clock. You feel with the Holy Ghost, you got a bell. That thing is ringing. Paul warns them. Don't fall asleep. Sleep is not your friend. Sleep will rob you of your, of your power. Samson, the strongest person in the Bible, lost his power because he fell asleep. Sleep will rob you of your victory. Jesus had to rebuke the disciples because why? They fell asleep. Don't answer this question, but has anybody ever had their house raided? <laughs> To my shame, I had my I had my house raided. I mean, it, it wasn't even my house. It was my auntie's house. If you're here, I'm sorry. I'm a changed man now. My auntie Irene. I don't know if she was here last night, but if you're here, I'm sorry. But anybody remember when the police come when they raid your house? When does the police come when they raid your house? You know when they come? They come when you're asleep. You know why? Because when you're sleeping, you're slipping. When you're sleeping, you're slipping. And similarly, in a strange way, the enemy waits until you're asleep and he throws a raid on your house. He throws a raid on your marriage. He throws a raid on your mind. He throws a raid on your peace. He throws a raid on your joy. He waits until you fall asleep. When you're sleeping, you're slipping. Paul wakes the church up. The day of the Lord is coming. My brothers and sisters. This pandemic has rocked many Christians to sleep. I really believe that. I really believe that one of the purposes, and I understand there are many purposes, but one of the purposes of this pandemic was a new offensive attack from the enemy on the church of God. I believe that the kingdom of darkness is trying to render the church useless and inactive. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. The purpose of the church is to worship together. Think about it. The purpose of the church is to pray together. The purpose of the church is to study the Bible together. Think about it. We've been preaching and teaching on this. The, the purpose of the church is to fellowship uh, together. Think about it. The church has been praying together and worshiping together for 2,000 years. 2,000 years we've been doing this. Acts 2, 1. And on the day of Pentecost, the believers were one in court and in one place. 2,000 years, think about it. In the last seven months, think about it. There have been Christians that have not worshipped in church for seven months. 
Think about it. There have been Christians that have not worshipped together for seven months. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. It's not the government that's attacking us. I taught you all this. The systems of the world are merely agents for the kingdom of God. Just as the church, or I'm not the angel kingdom of God, the kingdom of Satan. The systems of this world are agents for the kingdom of Satan. Just like the church is the agent for the kingdom of God. The systems of this world, particularly if they're not ran by unbelievers, do and do not honor God. The enemy is trying to rock us to sleep. If you're saved, if you're saved, I know. I know if you've been saved the last seven months, the bell has been ringing in your heart. And I understand that in certain, certain Sundays we could not come to church and there are people with legitimate concerns. I understand that. We validate that. We have an online campus for that. But listen, my brothers and sisters, if we could talk like family, I've been interviewing y'all. I've been doing a silent survey. And I've been asking people, hey, how's it going? How's it going? Do you, do you, do you, is something really wrong with you? And I, and I love y'all because y'all been honest. I love y'all. Y'all been honest. Y'all been honest. Y'all were like, no, nothing was really wrong with me. I just got lazy. I got out of my program. What's happening is we're ignoring. And it's a dangerous place to do because the longer you ignore the bell, the easier it is. The easier it is. I'm concerned about chapel of change. You know why? I'm concerned about chapel of change. You could, because you know why? Can we talk like family? Y'all ain't gonna judge me, right? Come on. I'm concerned about child change because in the last seven months, only two people, only two people asked me if they could sneak into church during live stream service and worship the Lord. Last seven months. Last seven months. Only two people asked me. Brian, I need to go. I need to go worship the Lord. Can I just can I just go? I won't bother nobody. I'll have my mask on. I'll be in the corner. I won't I just need to go. I just need to go worship the Lord. Can I do it, Brian? Can I do it? I just need I just need to be in the house of the Lord. I just need to worship the Lord. Can I can I sneak in? Can I sneak into that? Only two people. And one is not even from our church. One is not even from our church. One is from Whittier. I mean, no well, that way. And she drove way over here just to sneak into church because she felt that bell ringing in her heart and she needed to worship the Lord. We're not the only generation of Christians that the devil has tried to rock to sleep. We're not. I suspect in every generation the church has been attacked and tried to rock to sleep. Because I know once the devil... Loses the battle for your salvation. The next goal is for him to put you to sleep. Once he loses the battle for your salvation, his next great aim is to put you to sleep. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus told the church in Sardis. He says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation. Get this. You have a reputation of being alive. Hear this, Chapel of Jane. Listen to this. Revelation chapter 3. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. In other words, you feel like you're alive. You think you're alive. People think you're alive. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. God is not done with you. There's a work still for us, Chapel of Change. There is a plan still for us. Our work is not done. Amen. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. God reminded me. God reminded me that our work is not done. Chapel of Change, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up to worship again. Wake up to study God's word to, again. Wake up to prayer again. 
if you're watching online and you have health issues, we have an online campus that you can worship the Lord. You got to be more disciplined. You got to be more disciplined. Listen, it's hard to do that. Listen, I tried to do that. I tried to do. I tried. I tried to worship at home, and I gathered my kids around. And listen, it's hard. You got to be focused to do that. And I'm the pastor. And I'm the pastor. You got to be disciplined to do that. You got to be focused. You may have to put down the blinds. You may have to move the chairs. You may have to tell you be quiet. A couple times. But it's time for us to rise up to worship again. Wake up to pray again. As I call my wife up, we are still POWs, but we're not prisoners of war. We're people of worship. People of worship. People of worship. Now, I understand that some of us have gone through a lot of stuff in this last seven months, and therefore, I'm calling in a backup. I'm calling in backup. Because I understand that some of us need to be delivered from whatever it is that we need to be delivered from. And I want to encourage you to lean in. It's a Friday night. You ain't got nowhere to go. Amen. And we've been kicked out the building. So we are, we're going to worship the Lord and we're going to get somebody delivered. Amen. I want to encourage you to lean in because you may be bound in areas you don't even know you're bound in. Come on. Come on. I called in some backup. I called in some backup. My wife is going to lead us in a time of deliverance. Lean in, John. Lean in. Hallelujah. The one thing we need to understand in order to get our deliverance is that the spiritual warfare is real. It is absolutely real. God opened my eyes spiritually, supernaturally speaking, and allowed me to see three demons manifest. From zero to full figures. I'm not talking about shadows. Come they on. are real. I saw the spirit of mockery, Woo. the spirit of hate, and the spirit of pride. And the spirit of pride had a crown on its head. I know what they look like, and they are real. Yes, and they are after us. They are attacking us, whether we see it or not. They are real. My first encounter with a deliverance session happened at the altar of Chapel of Change. I heard the demon name and the demonic tongue. These demons are real and they try to steal, kill, and destroy what God has given to us. And so tonight, by the grace of God, I'm going to lead us through a session of deliverance. But I got to say this. That deliverance is not passive. It's not passive. You have to engage. Yes. Right. You have to want it yes. for Amen. yourself. Yes. I'm not walking you th through something that I myself have not gone through. Woo. I have learned not only how to administer deliverance, but to administer self-deliverance. And I have found myself at the throne of God's grace. Day after day, morning after morning, night after night, say, God, help me. And so what I'm going to walk you through tonight, if you're willing, is what I have walked myself through by the grace of God, with God, many times. Now, I want us to understand, according to the word of God, in Acts 10.38, that Jesus himself came. And he came to heal those who were oppressed by the devil. Yes. Demonic oppression is real. Yes. It is absolutely yes. real. Yes. Yes. And oppression comes to the born again Christian. Come on. I'm not talking about possession. Come on. I'm talking about oppression. Yes. I'm talking about those who have been attacked and made weary and heavy laden by the devil himself. Woo. In 1 John 3, 8, Jesus said that he came to destroy the works of the devil. And we know, I know, that deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is your portion if you are a believer in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how many years you've been serving God. It doesn't matter how strong you may think you are. At some point, your defenses will be down. And the enemy who has been studying you all your life will come in come in that moment of utter weakness Ooh, and try to rage and wage a good warfare, but on his side, not on yours. A heavy-duty 
So as Pastor Brian said tonight, we don't want you asleep. We don't want you attacked and defeated. We want you awake. Awake, the Bible says, to the spirit of the living God. The Bible says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But that word saved implies restoration and deliverance. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And so tonight, for those that want to participate in deliverance, I'm going to lead us in a prayer together. But here are some prerequisites that are absolutely necessary. Number one, humility. You have to be humble. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud every time. Two, honesty. You have to be transparent before God. I have had to be transparent before God and say, God, you are right and I am wrong. Help me. You have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over your life. Not just a friend, not just a healer, but Lord. Lord. And then you've got to make confession over your own sins. The sins that God has made you aware of. You've got to come clean and make confession. You've got to repent. You make a decision. It's not feeling. It's a decision to turn from your wicked ways and turn back to God. And then you've got to forgive. Probably one of the hardest things to do. And for me, I have had to learn to live a life of forgiveness even when I didn't want to. Even when I was kicking and screaming inwardly. Even when I said to God, I was 99% right and they were 1% wrong. He said, it doesn't matter. Humble yourself in that 1%. We don't connect the two. And finally, we release. We release the demonic oppression and attack, no matter what it looks like for you. And we're going we're gonna to say a prayer together right now. I'm going to lead us in a general prayer. For those of you that are going to participate and engage, listen, I'm going to cover several categories. But I'm going to lead us first in a prayer. And then after that, I'm going to pray for you. When I begin to pray for you, then you don't have to pray anymore. You just release. You just let it go. You let it go. But for those that feel or believe that they need deliverance, no matter what that is, I want you to stand up. Just as a public act of faith, if you believe, that you need deliverance. Listen, don't be embarrassed. All right. Let me tell you why I'm asking you to stand up. All right. no shame at the cross. Because when Jesus, Jesus. administered deliverance in the temple, Come on. he yeah. didn't say meet me in the prayer closet on my way out. He reached out his hand and he delivered them on the spot. I got no shame on, to declare before you tonight that after 20 years, Serving God, I needed a whole lot of deliverance from anger, Come on. from anxiety, yes. and from a host of things yes. that God had to deal with me yes. personally yes. about. And so tonight, as we prepare to engage in deliverance, we are going to stand on the word of God. And the Bible says in Acts 2.21, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And so we're going to pray that God, by his grace and power, would deliver us tonight. I'm going to lead you with words. But there's power in your words. And all you have to do is mean them from your heart. And so I'm going to lead you. And I want you to pray after me from your mouth and with your heart. Say this, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe that you are the Son of God, the 
only way to the Father. And that you died on the cross for my sins. And that you rose again from the grave on the third day. I now confess to you. Every sin. That you have made me aware of in this moment. That's right. You whisper that. Whisper those sins. Begin to confess those sins right now. Whisper those sins. Call them out by name. Call them by name. Call them by name. You know what it is. You know what those things are. You know what happened this morning, yesterday, last year. You know what those are. Just whisper those names. Whisper those sins. Yes, Lord. We make confession before you tonight. Now say this with me. Say, Lord, I repent of every sin I have committed. I hate those sins and I turn from them now. Lord Jesus, I ask you for mercy and forgiveness. If I've been involved with any sinful activity in my life, purposely, I repent and renounce it. I sever myself from it through the blood of Jesus. And if I have participated in any form of witchcraft, if I have any occult objects in my home, I renounce those things and I commit to getting rid of them today in Jesus' name. For witchcraft is as rebellion. And finally, Lord, I forgive. I forgive every person who has ever harmed me or wronged me. I forgive them just as I want you to forgive me. Now I want you, church, to name the people. You can whisper their names under your breath. You know who they are. You know what they did. You know how long ago it happened. But it doesn't matter. With time, it means nothing to God. You begin to whisper their names under your breath. And you take ownership of forgiving them right now. Individually, right where you're at. Release their names under your breath. That's right, release their names. The person that is probably the hardest for you to name is the one you need to name the most. You need to forgive. It's not an option. It's not an option. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Lord, to the best of my ability, I have humbled myself before you to obey. And God, I'm calling upon you right now. I claim your promise in your word. And by faith, I receive my deliverance tonight. Deliver me from every demonic torment and trespass, every demon and every evil spirit that has attacked me. I'm calling upon you, Lord Jesus, to deliver me now in your name. And by faith, I let them go now in Jesus' name. Release them. Just begin to release them. Let them go. Let them go. They're not for you. Fear is not your friend. We come against the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. We bind fear. We command 
name bring restoration and deliverance in that area oh God in Jesus name we uproot every residue of lust tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah that spirit of pride that spirit of pride that hates humility that hates authority that hates submission we come for you tonight you spirit of pride we call you up and we command you to come out out now in Jesus name loose God's people now in the name of Jesus God I want you to just pray somebody has a soul tie a soul tie just pray for that breaking of that soul tie. Just pray for that breaking of the soul tie. It's connected to the lust. It's connected to the fornication. Uh, uh, he or she can't stop thinking about that person. That person keeps popping back up in their mind. And, and you can't just get, you can't shake it. Just can't shake it. Just, just spend a little time just breaking that soul tie. And if that's you, just, just, just release it. Release it right now. Just pray for us, Lord. We renounce those soul ties right now in the name of Jesus. Every door and window that was open to that soul tie, we renounce it in the name of Jesus. We put it at the foot of the cross in the name of Jesus. We command our soul to be loosed, loosed, loosed from that other person now in the name of Jesus. We demolish that soul tie that was created in the name of Jesus. We give no legal ground anymore. We call it a trespasser now against our soul. And we take back the fullness of our soul. No longer to be intermingled in our emotions with that person. Not tonight. No longer. No more. In the name of Jesus. We break it. We break it. Break. Break from the thoughts. Break from the emotions. Break from the eyes. Break from the hands. In the name of Jesus. Break. Break, 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 be severed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
get this out of my mind, but I, I think there's someone here under a spirit of condemnation Come on, because of an words abortion. Of knowledge, Pastor. Because of an abortion. Speak them words of knowledge. Someone in here is under a spirit of condemnation because of an abortion. That's deliverance. Hallelujah. An abortion, a spirit of death. Spirit of death. No shame spirit of death. Where's Laura? Laura, come here. Make it personal. Hallelujah. Somebody had a spirit. Somebody had an abortion and there's a spirit of death. A spirit of death. And that death is bringing condemnation. Condemnation. And it's, and it's, and it's drying you up. It's drying, drying you up. And you're trying. You're trying. You're trying to get back to church. You're trying to get back in, your, in, in the study of God. You're trying. But the spirit of condemnation is hurting you. And I just... I just want Lord, Lord, just pray over somebody. I don't know who it is. Just pray, pray that lift that spirit of condemnation. For whoever break, this is break for, break that spirit of death. Let me say this: whoever that is for, I once delivered somebody who had an abortion, and the Holy Spirit said to me, "They need to confess and renounce the spirit of murder because that's what happened to the baby." Listen, you got to come clean and renounce it first, and then God will lift it. God will lift that spirit of condemnation up. So whoever that's for tonight, I want you to say this. Oh God, I confess before you tonight. Murder in the name of Jesus. God, I am sorry that I committed murder against my baby. And I am asking you tonight to forgive me, oh God. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness according to first John 1 9, because you are faithful and you are just. And if that is you tonight and you pray that prayer, we come against the spirit of condemnation in the name of Jesus. And we break, we break, we break, we break, we break, we break the spirit. Over your life tonight, right in the name of Jesus, out, 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 in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Looser right now in the name of Jesus. Looser right now in the name of Jesus. She will not be held back no more in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus forgives her. The blood of Jesus cleanses her. The blood of Jesus sets her free. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus makes her righteous. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Lucy.
for our brother's parents, for our brother's parents. He's asked us to pray over them. Can, can we call them to the front? Can we call them to the front? your hands towards our pastor here. Lift up your hands. Serve the Lord many years. Lift up your hands. Lift up. I need you guys to I need you guys to pray with me. I need you guys to pray with me. Some things we gotta unite our faith for. Some things we gotta unite our faith for. Lift up your hands towards our pastors here. Years of serving the Lord. Legacy. 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 We're going to pray. We're going to pray that the Holy Ghost push back. Push back any mental challenges. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit begin to renew the sails. Begin to renew the, 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 the sails and the, and the, and the, and the, and the I want to say the synops and the mind. Lift up your hands towards our pastors right here. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we intercede right now. We intercede right now, Father God, and we pray, we believe, we believe that your Holy Spirit has a restoration power to it, Father God, that it restores cells, and it restores blood tissue, and it restores memory. Lord, we unite our faith together, Father God. And we pray for a restoration over the mind. A restoration over the mind. A restoration over the mind, Father God. A restoration over the mind, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, saints, pray. Come on, pray. 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 Restore the mind. 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 In Jesus' name, we, we come against the spirit of amnesia. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And we command you. Yes. Lose them. Yes. Lose them. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your restoration power in their mind. Every
guys stand right here. Stand right here. Stand right here. Sit us right here apart, a little part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Husband and wife need prayer. 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 Marriages need prayer. Marriages need prayer. Marriage re marriages reflect. Marriages reflect. Marriages reflect God's love towards mankind. Marriages reflect God's love towards mankind. Listen to this. Marriages reflect God's love towards mankind. The reason why God is coming after your marriage is because he wants your marriage to be a bad testimony to, to his love on mankind. But we're about to pray. We're about to lift up these marriages right now. We're about to pray that God reconcile. We're about to pray that God restore. We're about to pray that God restore the love. 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 Hallelujah. Listen to me before I pray. Look at me, all the marriages that need prayer. Listen, before we pray that God restore your love for one another, the first thing that we're going to pray is that God restore your love for the Lord. That God restore your love for the Lord. God restore your love for the Lord individually. Restore your love for your Lord. Because, here it is, here it is. Because your love for each other must be your an overflow for your love from your love for the Lord. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Your love for one another must be an overflow of your love to the Lord. So if you ain't loving the Lord like you should, it's not going to overflow to your wife or your husband. You hear me? So we're going to pray, number one, for your love to the Lord to be restored and overflow. Overflow, that's the word. That's the word, overflow. Overflow. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Where's my wife at? Where's my wife at? Where's Lord at? Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. I'm going to pray and the Lord's going to pray. Overflow, 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 overflow. My brother, you should be loving the Lord more. You should be loving the Lord more. He said all. He said all. He said love him all. He said love him with all your heart. 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 Love him with all your heart, all your mind. That word all, that word all, that word all. Your overflows will come from all. You are to love him with all your heart. Love the Lord with all your heart. You are to love the Lord with all your heart. You are to love the Lord with all your heart. My brother, you ought to be loving the Lord more. You ought to be loving the Lord. The Lord has snatched you out of death. The Lord has snatched you out of death. The Lord has snatched you out of death more times than once. More times than what the Lord has snatched you out of death. You ain't been loving God as you should. You ain't been giving of your all. All, 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 all. You ought to be loving the Lord, Lord. You ought to be leading us. You ought to be leading us. You ought to be leading us in loving the Lord. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that the love of God in your heart be multiplied in the name of Jesus. The love of God in your heart be multiplied in the name of Jesus. The love of God, the love of God, love Him with all your heart, love Him with all your heart, love Him with all your heart, love Him with all your heart. You gotta love the Lord, you gotta love the Lord, love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord, love the Lord, love the Lord. Praying that your love for the Lord overflows. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Lord, break your heart for you. Break your heart for you, Lord. Lord, touch their heart to love you more. Jesus said, love the Lord God with all your heart and all your mind. Your love for one another will overflow from your love for God. Lord, I want, to, I, want, I want to ask you to pray for restoration. Offensive have taken place in these marriages. Offensive. Offenses have taken place. And some of them are not forgiving. Some of them are not forgiving. Some of them are not forgiving. Some of them are bringing back old arguments from last year. Some of them are bringing back old arguments from last year, Laura. And they're not forgiven. I, I want you to pray for a supernatural reconciliation right now. A supernatural uprooting. There's words that have been spoken to their hearts. And, they, and those words have not been uprooted. 
those, those harsh words that they have said to one another has not been uprooted in the heart. And the words are replaying, they're replaying, they're replaying, Laura. And I want you to pray for a supernatural reconciliation in these marriages. Lord, you said, oh, no man, anything but to love them. And God, we ask, Lord, tonight that you would uproot every feeling of lovelessness in the name of Jesus. God, that you would uproot every spirit of offense toward one another in the name of Jesus. That you would uproot even every spirit of bitterness and hate toward one another. Uproot, uproot, uproot in the name of Jesus. Every residue in the name of Jesus be uprooted and out in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would cover them, oh God. Baptize them with the spirit of love for you and for one another, oh God. We ask that the power of your spirit would come upon each one of them that would overflow a bubbling over of their love for you toward one another, oh God. That they, according to your word, would be willing to lay down their life for one another, oh God. We ask God that you would bring a supernatural restoration and reconciliation a newness of love in their life one for the other oh God in Jesus name we ask God that you would fill them once again with the spirit of struggling with lust. There's someone in here who's struggling with lust, the spirit of lust. And this is what I'm getting in my spirit. This is what I'm getting in my spirit. You're not wanting to let it go. You're not wanting to let it go. You're struggling with lust and you say you want freedom but you're not wanting to let it go. You're not wanting to let it go. And the Lord wants to let you know that he's not going to deliver you from your friend. He's going to deliver you from what you hate. He's not going to deliver you from what you like. He's going to deliver you from what you hate. And so you need to learn how to have, uh, uh, if I can say this right, uh, a righteous hatred toward that lust. A righteous hatred toward that lust. And so I want to pray for somebody who needs that righteous hatred toward lust. You need that prayer. Everybody remain in the atmosphere of prayer. If you need that prayer, if you need that prayer, come up right here. And if there's more than one or two of you, you got to spread it out. you got to spread it. Stay right here. If there's more than one or two of you, you got to spread it out. If there's more than one or two of you, spread it out. Come just go all the way over here. Spread it out. If there's more than one or two of you. If there's more than spread, you got to spread it out. Spread it out. Hallelujah. Spread it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. we got some deliverance. Spread out a little bit more. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. I need all those in the in, in the chairs. You gotta pray. Listen, we need help. We need backup. We need backup because you're talking about appetite here. We need backup. We need God to change the taste. We need God to change the taste. We need God to change the here's here it is. We need God to change some spiritual uh, uh, taste buds. Change the crave. Change the crave. I need those in the audience to just pray right where you're at. Just pray right where you're at. Pray right where you're at. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands as an act of surrender. Just as an act of surrender. Symbolic act of surrender. 
Lift up your hands as a symbolic act of surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word a couple weeks ago to our Carson campus, but I see it's for people here. And it's changing your crave. Changing your crave. Changing your crave. God is about to change your taste buds. He's about to change your taste buds. You 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 messed around and you you flirted with something and you opened the door. And now that spirit don't want to leave because you, you, you developed a taste for it. You developed a taste for it. And now God is trying to get you to spit it out. God is trying to get you to spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. Hallelujah. We're going to pray that God changes your crave. We're going to pray that God changes your crave. Delivers you from the spirit of lust and fornication. Deliver you from the spirit of lust and fornication, Lord, Lord. Lead them in a, in a, in a, in a prayer of deliverance of lust and fornication. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And we renounce the spirit of lust and fornication in the name of Jesus. We sever ties with that spirit tonight. And Lord God, we repent. We make a decision of our will tonight to turn from that sin and to turn back to you in the name of Jesus. Right now we come against that spirit. We come after you in the name of Jesus. We bind you, we rebuke you, and we command you to take your hands off, off, off of those people right now. Break, break your grip, break. Big move. 
Big move. Big move. Some of y'all, you got a faster phone. Some of y'all, you got a faster phone. I don't know how long, but you, you pray about it. To each person is different. But some of y'all are sneaking on your phone. You're sneaking on your phone when nobody's looking. And you're looking at things that you should not be looking at. And you're allowing a spirit of lust to creep up through this phone and onto you. And so some of y'all need to fast your phone. I'm not saying you got to get rid of your phone all your life. But you got to make a big move. And you need to fast it. If you're serious, you need to fast it. You need to fast it. I don't know what your big move is. The Holy Spirit, I can't tell you what your big move is. But the Holy Spirit will minister to you right now. But what I am saying, you got to make a big move. For some of y'all, you need to join our life recovery group. For some of y'all, you need to join our life recovery group with Brother Rick and, and Alice. For some of y'all, you need spiritual maintenance. You need spiritual maintenance. You got to give up that pride. You need to humble yourself and say, I need maintenance. Yes. Some of y'all were so deep into it that you need accountability. You need an accountability partner because y'all are sneaky. We are sneaky. The human spirit is sneaky. We got ways. You need accountability partner. You need to connect with either a sister or a brother and say, hey, hold me accountable. You've got to get some space. You've got to get some days of victory. The more space you get, the more days of clean time, if I can use that word, the stronger you'll become. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. You've got to get some clean time. You've got to get some clean time. You've got to get some days of victory. The more days of victory. Some of y'all think you can't even be, be, be delivered because you've been so sucked into it. But the more days of victory you get, the stronger you become for your spiritual maintenance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I'm going to pray to God to give you the courage to go back and make that big move, whatever that big move is. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for courage, 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 courage. Courage, 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 courage. Courage, 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 Lord God. Courage to make that big move. I don't know what it is. It's different for everybody. It's different for everybody, but I know it has to be a radical move. It has to be a radical move. I pray that you give them the courage to make that move as they go back, Father God. Give them the radical faith to trust you in that move. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. One more thing before we close. One more thing. I want to call up the sister. I want to call up our sister. Sister, come up here. You, 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 come up here. You, you, come up here. Come up. Here. Yeah, you, you, come up here. 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 Come here, Lord. Come here. Michelle, God is working in your heart deeply. Amen. Okay? Amen. Working in your heart deeply. Surgery. Spiritual surgery. That's what he's doing. Wow. Spiritual surgery. Because there's so much that he wants to do in and through you that sometimes he has to cut you to heal you. Amen. Sometimes you're, we are damaged to the point where he has to cut us to heal us. I didn't call you up here to put you on the spot. I didn't call you up here to call out whatever thing that you've been wrestling with. You know what it was. You know what it is. But you've been pressing in these last couple months. You've been pressing in. I called you up here to release you into a new season in your life. I come, called you up here by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to release you, to release you into a new season, a new season of freedom, a new season of wholeness, a new season of, of healing, a new season. I called you up here to release you. Look at me, look at me, Michelle. In the past, you've listened to the wrong voices. That's why I want you to look at me, because I need you to hear this voice of, of the Lord speaking through me. You are being released into a new season. 
a new season of wholeness, a new season of healing, a new season of freedom. No more condemnation for you. No more condemnation for you. No more condemnation for you, Michelle. God is going to use your life in a significant way. In a significant way. We're going to pray for you right now. Lord, I want you to release her into a new season of freedom. Loose her into a new freedom of wholeness in the name of Jesus. daughter before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you God tonight for her freedom and her victory we thank you that you are speaking to her oh God that you are doing a new thing in her life that you have removed that spirit of condemnation that spirit that held her down in Jesus name we thank you Lord God that you have uprooted that you've uprooted those bondages in Jesus' name and that you are releasing her into her purpose and her destiny in Jesus' name. We thank you for your plans that you have for her. Plans to prosper her and not to harm her, to give her a future and a hope. And we declare freedom. We declare Hallelujah. victory. And we Hallelujah. declare purpose over her life tonight in the name of Jesus. Have your Lord, our brother right here. Lift up your hands to our brother right here. Lift up your hands, Brother Miles. Lift up your hands as, a, as an act of surrender. Everybody lift up your hands to our brother Miles right here. Lift up your hands. We're going to pray. We're going to deliver. We're going to pray for deliverance from a spirit of anger. Spirit of anger and frustration. It's a spirit of frustration that is getting the best of him. We're going to pray for deliverance from that spirit of anger upon this young man's life. God has a calling for you, Miles. Yes. He has a calling for you, for you, Miles. And the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. The anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. Brother Miles, you've been let down. But Brother Miles, you have been rejected. But God wants you to know that he's accepted you into the beloved accepted you into the beloved. He's accepted you into the beloved. You don't have to be mad at the world no more. You don't have to be mad at your old friends no more because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has accepted you into the royal priesthood. And yea, even on top of that, he's called you to be a worshiper in his house. He's called you to lead his people into worship. God is turning that anger into worship. He's turning that frustration into worship. God is going to use your fingers to worship Him. He's going to use your fingers to worship Him, your mouth to worship Him. God is turning that frustration into worship. God is turning that anger into worship. Out of, out of that frustration, the, the enemy thought that that frustration was going to hold you down. But out of that frustration, God is going to birth some new songs. God is going to birth some new songs out of you, Miles. New songs. New songs out of you, Miles. Out of that anger and that frustration mixed with the Holy Ghost, God is going to birth some new songs. New songs out of you, Miles. New songs out of you, Miles. Lord, lead them in a prayer of renouncing that anger. Delivering them from that anger. In Jesus' name, say this, Miles. I renounce the spirit of anger and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I humble myself before your cross. And I lay down every weight of sin. In the name of Jesus, I cast it off. And I receive all that you have. Jesus, have you? 
stand to our feet as we dismiss with a blessing. Hallelujah. Someone give the Lord a hand praise. Anybody receive from the Lord this evening? Hallelujah. We're going to dismiss with a blessing. And then the worship team is going to just worship the Lord because we want to end how we started in worship. We're going to dismiss and ask God to bless you for coming out. God knows what you need. God knows exactly what you need. He knows where you need it, and he knows how to get it to you. I want to encourage you to be in church this weekend wherever you go to church. Go worship the Lord. Take the fire that you received tonight to wherever you worship the Lord. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. In fact, in our blessing of dismissal, I'm going to release you to take the fire. I'm going to release you to take the fire. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Now unto Him that lights the fire in your heart. Unto the Lord Jesus Christ who died that you could shine bright in this world unto the Holy Ghost who fills you with divine fire. In the name of Jesus, I release you. 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 With the blessing of the Lord, with the protection of the Lord, I release you. With the protection of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, and in the name of Jesus, I release you.